Hey folks, it's Jason here, Old Car Auto Guy. We're coming back to you today with another update on the Project Volkswagen. So you're going to want to stay tuned. So the Volkswagen Project, as you see behind me, is much quieter than the last time we heard it or saw it. We got that flex pipe all fixed up, but we might still do something custom uh, to the exhaust that's more custom than it just broke. So today we're doing brakes all the way around and a couple of control arms to get this thing ready to pass inspection. But one of the things we've already done to it is we've put some oversized winter snow treads on it. So what we did was we put 205 70 15 inch uh, tires that fill out that wheel well a little bit more, give it a little bit more of a stance for maybe an upcoming uh, upgrade that we're going to do to this car. Let's take a look at those oversized tires. I think those tires give it a little bit more attitude and the upcoming project that we are going to do is likely uh, give it a little bit more height and uh, kind of make it resemble the uh, Audi A4 Quattro with the a little bit of a lift and the bigger tires and the, and the ground clearance and stuff like that. So just because it's a POS doesn't mean it has to look like a POS. I mean, it is a 20 year old car after all, but nevertheless, we've got to head to Callus right now, pick up those parts. We're gonna come back to the shop and get started. Okay guys, we've got the um, Volkswagen. We gotta come up with a name with this thing, guys. This is gonna be the last video for asking you guys for what we're gonna call it. Uh, if you check my Instagram, you'll see we've got a poll on there for a couple of suggestions. It just makes it so hard when I go to make reference to the car, I don't know what to call it. So anyways, we've got the Volkswagen up in the air and we've got all the parts that we've ordered that we need laid out here on the bench. So if you remember from one of my previous videos, everything that I had to order to get this car to pass inspection was going to cost about $300. Now, keeping in mind that to source this out locally, the front pads were going to be $23, $46 a piece for the rotors, $23 for rear pads, $53.40 for rear rotors. The front forward control arm, which is the one that's bad, was $47, and I was going to replace the rearward, rearward one, because I'm reading there anyway, for $56. So that was $295.58. I was able to source all of this out for 195 bucks. I saved myself a hundred dollars. And where I sourced these parts out from was two places. So Rock Auto was one and the other place was uh, called Auto Shack out of Toronto, Ontario. And I couldn't get over the prices that I paid for these things. The front rotors that were $46 a piece, I paid 27. The front pads, which were 23, I paid 15. Both rear rotors and the rear pads came as a package for 58 bucks. And I got all four upper control arms for $68. And the reason why I got all four was because it came as a package for just a couple bucks difference from what I would have paid for just one. Now, you're probably questioning why there's four control arms there. Well, let me show you. On these Volkswagens, there's a forward and a rearward upper control arm. They're connected here with like a little ball joint and they go back into where the control arm mounts. So this is the one that's bad. We're going to replace this one here. I'm not sure yet if I'll do the other side, but seeing as how I got them and I got them so cheap, I might as well do it. Not sure if that's going to be today. Anyways, so today we're just focusing on the brakes and that right front forward upper control arm. So let's get the tires off and start tearing away at these brakes. And I will leave links and part numbers in the description box down below if you guys are interested in getting these same deals 
on these parts for your 2000 or same vintage Volkswagen Passat or Audi A4. So a couple of things that some of you guys probably already know if you're mechanically inclined is that Volkswagens are notoriously difficult to do a simple task as brakes on. Sometimes you need special tools to work away at things. So far we haven't run into that, but the little retainers, the sliders that uh, are on the caliper, they require a number seven hex head uh, as opposed to say a 10 millimeter or a 13 millimeter uh, bolt. And the brackets actually are 16 millimeter. They're held on there fairly good. Uh, you know, no surprise there. But when we take a look at these rotors that come off of the front, this is the front side. You'll see how chipped away and rusty it is. And uh, only about three quarters of an inch or so of that rotor was actually making contact with the pad. So we're just going to carry on with this one and work our way around the car and uh, touch base with you every once in a while. Okay, so we've got the pads and rotors on uh, on the passenger side front and we were getting ready to start taking the control arm apart up here as well and let me show you what I ran into. So there's a bolt that goes in here and a nut on the other side. The bolt goes in that way and you cannot change that control arm on the vehicle. The strut assembly has to come out uh, because the inner fender is in the way. I can't slide that bolt out far enough. So we're not going to be able to do that unless we take the strut out and well we're not taking the strut out now because when I do get the uh, the suspension lift for the vehicle I'm gonna have to do it all over again so we'll wait until uh, that kit comes in which should be probably uh, a couple of weeks uh, we will do it all at once it'll make it a little bit easier to get some leverage on those nuts and bolts as well as we can have it right on the bench and do it that way so we're gonna wait on that I'll tighten that one back up for now and uh, we'll just deal with it when the, uh, when the lift kit comes in. In the meantime, we're gonna go around to the other side. We'll do the brakes over there, get back to the rear, and we will be done for the day. So in an attempt to put all this back together, I got some wrenches on that back bolt, no problem. I went to go snug up the nut that was on the end here, which is now here, and just one extra pull too much, and I broke it. So now before we move on to the rest of the brakes I'm committed to get this fixed. Let's see if we can pound that out. Well there we have it. One rusty bolt. What are the chances that we got another one laying around here somewhere? To get that put in because without it in there your ball joints will pop off and that's probably not a good thing Let's see if we can find a bolt so i managed to find a bolt out back it was long enough but unfortunately didn't have enough threads so we had to stack a few washers on this end stick it through there we've got it tight with a lock washer with a lock nut and uh, it should suffice for now until we can get some extra threads cut onto that bolt, which is probably going to have to be the plan. So crisis averted for now. We're moving on to the other side and finish up this brake job. So we've got the brakes done. All four corners are looked after. We even serviced the calipers while we were in there, make sure that all those slide pins were working the way they should, cleaned up the calipers and uh, adjusted the, uh, I guess this, there's no adjustment on the emergency brake on here. They're just kind of a spring loaded thing, uh, but we greased everything up, sprayed them down, make sure that everything was going to work. We're gonna put the car down. We're gonna clean up the tools and uh, clean up the mess that we made here. And then we're just gonna take it for a quick little spin, make sure that everything is operating as it should. If there's no metal grinding where the uh, backing plates are so rusty on this, uh, we might get a little bit of that noise uh, while we're driving around. So let's get cleaned up and I'll come right back to you. So the one thing you're for sure going to want to do before you back your vehicle out and try driving it down the driveway or whatever is pump the brakes. We push those calipers back, the pistons, and that means that all that brake fluid is back up in the reservoir. And the first time you go to hit those brakes, all you're doing is pushing that piston out a little bit. 
not doing a darn thing. Press it two or three times, make sure that that pedal is hard even before you start the car because trust me, we know from experience what not pumping the brakes can do to a wall in our other shop. So for now, let's see if the new brake pads put out the brake light on the dash as well. Looks like we got her. Imagine that, we're driving a 20 year old vehicle with no lights on the dash. Of course, that red light was just the emergency brake that you saw. Anyways, let's take this thing for a spin. We'll close up the shop here and we'll see how well these new brakes really work. So there are a couple of things that we did to this car kind of off camera just you know through the week when uh, we were just puttering around. And, and that was, we put a set of spark plugs in this car because it was tending to be a little bit hesitant and you know a hitch when you were going down the road so we did do that and we also filled it up with premium I don't know if the previous owner was using premium gas in this that is what it calls for so part of going for a drive today is to help get some of that premium running through the system in hopes that that's uh, going to help the system but we've also got a fuel filter coming for it as well uh, in hopes to get rid of that hitch I also got a rear view mirror fixed up on it the uh, there was one in the car which I assume was just broken off at some point in time but nevertheless we put the the one that we found back up here hopefully it lasts for a while uh, one thing I just remember reminding myself now is I forgot to tighten it up but today's goal was to get the brakes done and to get that control arm well we know the control arm has to wait because of uh, the clearance with that bolt we're, we're gonna have to take that strut out anyways to put the lift kit in so we're gonna wait on that for a little bit all four brakes done um, it didn't take me you know like five or six episodes to do it uh, like Grant Tom no I'm kidding Grant I just I mean that in the sincerest way well you know what I'm, you know what I'm getting at anyways speaking of Grant Tommy notice the shirt that I'm wearing today is the straight six pistons tee that he offers on his channel and I'm gonna put a link to that spread shirt store as well in the comment section or in the uh, description box below so if you guys like the look of the straight six pistons tee go over and give grant some support by doing that also we are down to just one car guy and six fan show left uh coming up this thursday evening it'll be on my channel sorry no it'll be on grant's channel uh for the season finale of season two so we're going to take a break over the holidays, so there's Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's. Once uh, January rolls around, we'll be back at you with a great lineup of, uh, of cool stuff to talk about on the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. So I hope you will tune into that on Thursday evenings, this coming Thursday, 7 Central, 8 Eastern, and 9 local time, that uh, you'll join us in the live chat for some questions and, some for, uh, and for some entertainment. Also, Old Car Auto Guy t-shirts are in the description box below. It is the first link if you want your very own Old Car Auto Guy t-shirt, uh, Focus t-shirt, or the Demise of Bubbles t-shirt. Those are still available at my Spreadshirt store. You can head on over there and support my channel, again, in just a different fashion than just watching these videos. I am very, very thankful for all the new subscribers. If you're new here, thank you so much for being a part of Old Car Auto Guy. We've got lots coming up in the near future with Project Grandma, as well as with the Passat. Hopefully by the time we have the next episode, we'll have a name picked out for this Volkswagen. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rearview mirror. I love you all, God bless. Let's do it again in the next video.